ready to talk about The Last Jedi. So if you're watching this video, The Last Jedi has come out today. So since it's out, this is an all out, fair warning, spoiler review. A lot of big things happen in this movie and I'm just gonna talk about them with no fanfare. This will ruin the movie for you. So please, 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 if you haven't seen it, don't watch this. All right, that's the only warning. Let's go right off the bat. I know everyone's complaint about this movie is gonna be that it's really long. Um, and it is. Ray and her friends are separated for most of the movie, so we basically have two movies that are stuck together. So at times it can feel like it's moving quite slowly because it's two movies each progressing at the pace a movie normally would, so it feels like it's taking extra long to get to the climax. On the other hand, this didn't really bother me because I wasn't bored at any point. I was enjoying each of the scenes on like an individual basis, so um, that was my main complaint and it didn't bother me that much. I think the people that decided they didn't like this movie, that's gonna be the thing that they uh, focus in on. I'm gonna be super honest, I was extremely wary about the Resistance storyline when it was getting set up. There's like this bizarre contrivance where the First Order is following the Resistance from like a middle distance and they're going nearly the same speed and the First Order is going slightly faster but given their large distance, it will take the First Order a long time to catch up. Or I've only seen it once, I think it was maybe that the First Order was following at the exact same speed, and if they tried to light speed again, they'd overshoot it. And so they just had to follow at an identical speed um, and wait for their enemy to run out of fuel. It was weird because the characters were addressing the urgency of the situation, and then somebody goes, We've only got about 18 hours until they catch up. And I get that that's still bad because of the inevitability of it, but 18 hours is an extremely long time. From here forward, I just saw it, so I'm kind of just gonna go point by point of things that happen. Let's go. The revelation that Kylo Ren's helmet was not Snoke's idea, and in fact, Snoke was not in favor of the helmet, was amazing to me. I like knowing that this man evidently showed up to work one day in a crazy robot mask, and there had been no precedent indicating that this was an appropriate thing to do. I just wanna imagine that contextually, him showing up to work in the mask was just as strange as if you or I had done that. My new headcanon is that the Knights of Ren, none of them wear helmets. They just wear like earth policeman attire and Kylo Ren is very much an outlier. Speaking of the Knights of Ren, I guess it's confirmed that they are Luke's former students because Luke said that Kylo left with a handful of his students, and I still don't think we've seen them yet unless they were the Praetorian Guards who could wield lightsaber-type weapons, but no one called them the Knights of Ren at any point. Maybe the Knights of Ren died a while ago. Maybe when Snoke called Kylo Master of the Knights of Ren, it's like he was, it's still his title, but he wasn't a good master and they all died in battle like two years ago. I like that BB-8 murdered three guys. BB-9 e was not in it that much, but he did at least have a moment where the camera was looking only at him and he was doing something. So that's more than I can say about C2B5. I noticed that this little guy 2BB2 had a little more screen time than BB9E, actually. You know, just rolling around in the resistance scenes. So that was kind of cool. When Snoke throws General Hux onto his face, I liked the sound that it made. The porks were not in it that much. Um, I think they were in it a good amount. It didn't feel gratuitous to me. People that hate the porgs will disagree. I think of the cute sidekick count, BB8 actually still got the majority of the spotlight, which is great, I didn't think that was gonna happen. Hey, you guys remember when I made a bingo card of all the stuff I thought might happen? Which, by the way, looks like this, so that's kinda devastating. But hey, you might notice that one of those squares, I put something very specific that I didn't even really think was gonna happen, alien horse race on Canto Bite. And when they first arrive on Canto Bite, they are inside the casino, they're showing all the interior, I'm like, it's not gonna happen, we had our establishing shot, we're not getting the horse race. And then, like I was having a dream, the characters walked out onto the balcony and looked over it and it's like, oh look, look down there, an alien horse race. Not only was it in the movie, it was like a major plot point. We got some forced ghost Yoda and he was a puppet. I actually think when he first showed up, you know they had the translucent blue glow effect on him and he was a puppet. The combination of those two looked very weird. I was like, oh my God, Yoda, what's wrong with him? And then the glow died down and it's like, 
oh, he's a puppet. And then I was 1000% for it. That whole scene was such a healing moment because I really hated Yoda in the prequels. The prequels end up giving the impression that in the original trilogy, like his mind has been broken or he's senile or something. Like they're not even the same character. His personality was so altered. So like, I'm glad to see that in this movie, either you get to stay senile as a ghost and that's our takeaway, or it's basically like, yeah, we're gonna forget about the prequel Yoda thing. And then they burn the sacred Jedi texts, but while they're burning them, the camera zooms in on the pile, and you see that it's actually every book from the original Star Wars Legends canon that they're burning, and the Thrawn trilogy is right on top. And then Luke looks right at the camera, and he's like, go to hell, Timothy Zahn. And I'm like, that's a little gratuitous. When Kylo killed Snoke, I wanted him to symbolically cement his new position of power by donning Snoke's gold iridescent ceremonial robes. But since he cut Snoke in half, it would be like crop top length. And he's wearing the pants and no shirt look from the force bond scene. So it's just his bare chest with this iridescent golden mesh crop top over it and he's strutting in front of his stormtroopers like, I'm in charge now. I didn't trust Laura Dern, so like now I feel like a jerk. It's not my fault. The purple hair threw me. I thought she was going to be the character they found on Canto Bite. I didn't even know about the DJ character. And then when I saw him, I was like, oh, because I really didn't like Benicio Del Toro as the collector. I feel like as the collector, it's like this character who's larger than life. He's wearing these crazy flamboyant clothes. He like walks out with this crazy physicality. And then he's just like, hi, welcome to my house. My name's Mike. So since the thing I didn't like about the collector is that he like wasn't doing a character character voice of any kind. In this movie, he was doing a really weird character voice. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'm on board for this. It seems pretty clear that Rey and Kylo have some kind of connection through the force, like their yin and yang, the balance, etc. And Snoke was probably just bluffing when he said that he was the one making them communicate. I think it's more that he just saw that that happened in Kylo's mind. But I do like to imagine that he was party to their awkward telepathic hand-holding sessions and just feeling like a third wheel the whole time. Oh, it was cool that Kylo revealed who Rey's parents are. And I'm putting that in finger quotes because I feel like the reason they had the villain be the one to say that was to lend it some ambiguity and leave people arguing with each other until episode nine about like, he was just saying that to make her turn to the dark side. Cause historically that's the thing dark siders do all the time. I hope it's true though. I've already said that I think it's stronger narratively if Kylo is just the total opposite from Rey where he comes from privilege and prestige and Rey comes from nowhere. I think that sets them up better as opposition to each other. But when I always imagined it, it was that they were loving nobodies and either they were in danger or they died so they had to give her up. And I never even considered the idea that they were just jerks and they either abandoned or sold her to Unkar Plutt. Um, I like that a lot more, honestly. I think it's more interesting. Also, food for thought, if we go back to Rey's force vision in the last movie, all we see is her screaming at a ship to come back. So this could totally fit the idea of that narrative. And I like to think that the idea they were coming back was this entire time just self-delusion on Rey's part. I think that's really powerful for her character. But we'll see if that's actually the truth of it. I'll be a little bummed out if we find out he was lying or mistaken. The best line in the whole movie is probably when Kylo Ren is screaming at them to fire on the Falcon, just because he says it with so much emotion. It's like, all all of his pent up rage toward his dad and the resistance and Rey. Yeah, I just thought it was funny. I love Supreme Leader Kylo. I'm so hyped for it and that we're gonna go into episode nine with that already being the situation. And I love that Hux is working for him now. It's like the first order is just being run by bickering children. I know they're both like 30, but that just feels really young to me to run a whole evil government. They literally feel like they're assistant managers that have gone mad with power. I'm assuming that the first order will be really crippled by this. Like Snoke was evil and scary, but he at least seemed sort of measured and unimpulsive. I feel like Kylo Ren's particular brand of crazy is not going to inspire a lot of confidence. And then add to that the fact that Hux is going to be constantly trying to undermine him and overthrow him. And if the Knights of Ren are still kicking around somewhere, they could try for a coup. They could even team up with Hux in order to accomplish this, planning on overthrowing him later. It's really funny to me that Kylo has 
on at least two occasions, woken up to find someone he knows pretty well contemplating murdering him in his sleep. I feel like the first time that happens to you, you get to feel really shocked and offended, and then the second time, you have to like, kind of acknowledge that you're the common denominator there. You know, start pointing some of that blame inward. I like that the Skywalker saber got cut in half. I assume that the significance of that is that the kyber crystal inside also got broken in half, and you're like, Oh no, it's broken, but no. You know what you can do with two halves of a kyber crystal is make some kind of, of saber staff, like the one that Darth Maul used, but maybe using like your scrap metal stick thing. And then maybe if there was someone that was like your opposite in the force and the force was connecting you as equals, maybe hypothetically it would make sense for you both to fight with halves of the same crystal. And maybe since the crystal's all broken and stuff, it'll make that warbly, crackly noise like Kylo's does. The best part of the movie for me, and the part that I'm always gonna remember watching for the first time, is the whole part from the moment they go into Snoke's throne room onward. The idea of two Jedi characters fighting together as a team in perfect synergy is like exactly what I wanted. It's definitely something that the prequels could and should have delivered on, but they definitely didn't. The multi-Jedi fight scenes in the prequels were so mechanical and dry to me. Like, remember that horrible Coliseum one where it's just like a thousand Jedi? They're all swinging their lightsabers really fast. It's just showing you this distant shot of lots of them, and you're like, I don't know who any of them are, I wish I cared. There's no meaningful teamwork or interaction or characters that you're invested in. It's just simultaneous lightsaber swinging and just noise and stuff. And a lot of expanded universe stories have Jedi who are buddies with their masters or their allies, but I feel like in the movies, Jedi teamwork fights are super underrepresented. And just that whole scene, there were so many great moments. <laughs> Oops. Rey igniting the Kylo lightsaber. Kylo Ren cutting Snoke in half. Um, I just remembered that my downstairs neighbor has like a big Millennium Falcon displayed in his window and sometimes he will just hang out down there with his window open. And I really hope he didn't just hear that. Um, Kylo Ren and Rey fighting back to back and like doing rolls off each other and stuff. Rey throwing him the lightsaber and then he activates it and it goes through the guard's face. Um, when Holdo rammed that ship at light speed and cut through it, I was going, oh, and then all the audio cut out, like to be dramatic and I was still going, oh, I cut myself off because it was silent, but if anyone was at the premiere and they heard that, that was me. Just every new thing that was happening, I was going, ah, clutching my head, clutching at my neck, hiding behind my BB-8 bag, leaned forward. It was just like everything I wanted to see. And I realized halfway through that fight scene that I was physically shaking just from like the adrenaline kick, I guess. And it, it was kind of painful and it didn't go away. I continued shaking through the end of the movie. Yeah, basically I really liked this movie and I know since I posted that I went to the premiere, everyone's gonna say it's because I'm biased now and I'm shilling for it. I, don't, I can't really do that. I can't pretend to like a movie that I don't like. I'm actually really bad at giving people false compliments, even like real life friends. So honestly, if I had gone to the movie premiere and I had hated it, I would feel really guilty, and my guilt would probably result in me just not making a video about the movie. Like, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything, which is a funny approach to take to, like, a product made by a large studio. But yeah, I think The Last Jedi, um, as a cohesive whole, it is objectively paced very strangely, which I think detracts from it somewhat. However, as far as emotional resonance, Every individual scene I did really like. My personal taste in movies is that I like ones that have a lot of emotional investment in the characters and good character interaction where you like to see them play off of each other. And from there, plot structure is extremely secondary to me. That's why I really liked The Force Awakens despite the plot being very simplistic and very familiar because it was mostly about introducing the new characters and I really liked the new characters. I, uh, I thought they were fun and I was excited to see them meet each other and see how that went and that was pretty much what the movie delivered on. So if you liked The Force Awakens, you will really like this movie and I think you will like it 
three to four times more than The Force Awakens. And I bet on the whole, it's gonna get good reviews and audiences will really like it and it will make a million buckets of money. And I bet a lot of your Star Wars loving friends are gonna be like, hmm, I didn't like it. And if they say that, I would appreciate it if you would just humor me and ask them if they liked Rogue One. And I promise you that 80% of the time, they will say that yes, they loved Rogue One and they liked that it was edgy and the fights were cool and the walkers on the beach were so awesome. And you're going to be like, how did Jenny know that they would say that about Rogue One? And there's no reason. There is no correlation, don't worry about it. And now I'm gonna play you guys out with a series of clips of me guessing increasingly uncanny things right about this movie and completely ignoring all the things I got wrong as though they had never happened. Ray's parents aren't anybody important. If we do find out Ray's parents in this movie, I'm gonna guess that they're not Luke or Leia or Han. I don't think he's ever gonna put the helmet back on. I guess he did only have one, but that means that this is obsolete. Evil BB-8. We see another robot that is BB-8, but an evil version. And like, instead of being orange and white, he's black and red. He's thinking about killing Leia and conflicted about it. He's not gonna do it. Leia won't die by his hand and I also don't think she'll die by anyone else's. I think she'll live. I think Rose could end up being a Finn love interest. Rose Tico's sister will die. Being a pilot is a pretty dangerous job. I think that Luke said it's time for the Jedi to end because he doesn't want to train any more Jedi because he did that and his nephew turned evil, killed all the Jedi. So he, he's like, no. It'll just end badly again. I'm holding up my Kylo Ren doll that I put in a t-shirt of Rey for no particular reason. Team reforms Kylo friendship. Let's get jackets. Force lightning. Snoke dies like really early on and it turns out that some other character was our sleeper villain. That would be such a stakes raiser. Maybe Kylo Ren kills him and then like, we find out Kylo Ren is like way scarier. I know there's a casino planet and I think that for one of the establishing shots, like, like a two second shot, we're gonna see all these quadruped aliens lined up to race and people are like betting on them and we're like, oh, it's like a horse race, but they're aliens because it's Star Wars. It's worth noting that not only did Luke contemplate killing one of his students and his own nephew, but after defending himself, Ben evidently ran off with some of his other classmates. So please consider how that reflects on Luke as a teacher. Luke was the kind of guy where if one of his students runs into the dorms going, Professor Luke just tried to murder me in my sleep with a sword, a non-zero number of his other students went, your story checks out. I believe he would do that.